I've been studying in Peru for about six years. I started with the Inca culture, um, but I soon saw that what the Inca were supposed to have made was beyond their capability technically. So I started to look at megalithic things, which suggested that, that a much older culture existed. And along with that, this interesting phenomenon of strange shaped skulls started to appear, not only in Cusco and the Sacred Valley of Peru, but also places like Tiwanaku. So I told David Childress that I was thinking of writing a book, and he said, well, why don't we write a book together? And I thought, well, David's famous, so that will work. <laughs> so David came up with the cover and the name, and I, ha you know, I said, sure, David, looks excellent. You know, uh, But the thing is that by the time he and I wrote the book, I was already researching into the area of the possibility that some of these skulls weren't deformed, they were born this way. And that is what I'm still working at. This is the most famous skull in the world. And it's located in a little museum in Ica, Peru, which is uh, south of Lima. And this is the one, if you put elongated skull, alien skull, or anything like that into Google, you'll wind up with this skull. Uh, this is, you know, people automatically say this is Anunnaki or alien or hybrid or anything like that, but I'm trying to base my research as much as possible on scientific ev evidence. I'm trying not to speculate because 90% of the internet is speculation. One of the key things was this word, chongos. It took me about a year to find out what Chongos was, and it's the graveyard of the nobility of the Paracas culture. And it's only in this graveyard that you find skulls shaped like this. This is another example <clears throat> at the Ica Museum. Both of these skulls come from this place called Chongos. And so through about almost six years of research, you know, mainly looking at the concept of deformation, what you'll see is that is a normal human skull from the Inca civilization, not a royal Inca person, an Inca farmer. We can date that person at between 1400 and 1500 AD. In the middle is what you'll see as an example of deformation from the same area. And these are the interesting ones. Again, on the internet, what, what you'll see is an array of different shapes of skulls that people call Anunnaki, alien, hybrid, etc. The intriguing thing is that one, that one, that one, that one, and I think that one all come from this little place in Peru or area called Paracas. And there's a lot of speculation about the Amarna period in Egypt, that they again are alien hybrids or something like that. But what I'm going to try to show you is the fact that there isn't a lot of actual medical evidence that the Amar Amarna family, such as Nefertiti here, were more than slightly different from um, a normal human. This is thought to be possibly the skull of Nefertiti. And if you go back from here to there to there, you'll see that that is very much an artistic representation. That is not the same as this. So Egyptologists, or not Egyptologists, but Egypt experts that I know have told me not to speculate too far into the idea that the uh, Amarna family, such as um, Tutankhamun, um, Akhenaten, Nefertiti, etc., were necessarily much different from normal people. This is an example of a sculpture of the head of Akhenaten, but again, it could be an artistic representation and not necessarily exactly the way he looked. And this is one of his daughters. This is what the National Geographic Society believe Tutankhamun actually looked like. And that is the profile. 
As you can see, he didn't look normal, but then again, he doesn't have a huge skull. Um, some people have said also that the original is much larger and that uh, National Geographic, because in some circles, they're not exactly the most reputable of institutions, um, reduce the size because they're afraid of the idea that these people actually existed. But this is supposed to be a CAT scan. This is Tutankhamun on the bottom, and that is supposedly Akhenaten, but Akhenaten's skeleton has never been found. And also Nefertiti's uh, mummy has never been found. Some people speculate they found, but there's no concrete evidence. Again, in the art, you see the children seem to have elongated skulls. And what David and I tried to do is look globally as to where this phenomenon of deformation occurred. This is a tribal people on uh, the west coast of Africa in Congo who originally came from Sudan, which is slightly south of Egypt. So there is a possibility that either as a ceremonial thing or maybe genetically that these people are descended from the Egyptians of, of the time period of the Amarna family. And here again, a 20th century photo. You can see the child, obviously, um, his or her skull has been uh, cranially deformed, most likely. And here's another example of the same tribal group. This is in Melanesia, more specifically in Vanuatu. And so the connection I've been able to find is that uh, Again, <clears throat> I find it very important to look both at what archaeologists and anthropologists have to say, but also the oral traditions of, of the people. And it's where you have an overlap of archaeology and oral tradition where I think you find the truth. The archaeologists and anthropologists say that these people of Vanuatu came down through Asia and island hopped and reached Vanuatu. But luckily, thanks to the internet, I found um, a story written by or spoken uh, by one of the elders of these people. And he said, I don't care what these Western people have to say. Our ancestors came from Egypt through the Red Sea. So there could be a connection with Egypt. And here's another example of a 20th century photograph from Vanuatu. Malta is another place. It, the skulls there have been written about, but unfortunately, as is the phenomenon, a lot of the large collections or even small collections of deformed and elongated skulls in the major museums of the world have been taken off display. And I don't know if it's conspiracy theory, but this is the most recent photograph uh, from Malta, probably from the 1960s. And it shows clearly that these people look kind of different but the, the vast collection of more than 200 skulls is not accessible. This is an example from Russia. And this is an example of the Hun people, as in Attila the Hun. Not necessarily cranial, uh, elongated crania, but the flattening of the forehead. And that's a phenomenon that is found throughout the Americas, especially in North America. This Klaus would, uh, if Klaus hasn't seen this before, this is from Austria, probably about the first century AD. And up into the Renaissance and beyond, royal families of Europe either fashioned their heads to look like this or possibly naturally looked like this. This is an example from the Mayan culture of Mexico and this is Olmec. And it's in the art that we see depictions, but probably exaggerations. This is Olmec. These are jade figures. They're very famous. And this is from Tiwanaku in Bolivia, where you find major me uh, megaliths, including Puma Punku, possibly the most mysterious um, megalithic site on Earth, where you have incredible technical precision.